Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of uh, the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute, PBBI, for the spring semester, uh, even though we are still in winter, uh, of 2024. So, the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute from California State University, Fresno. We want to welcome each and every one of you to this session, those of you who are following us in various uh, platforms. So many, many thanks to all of you who are following us uh, through Facebook Live and uh, some of the uh, groups that have agreed to uh, uh, also broadcast this uh, brief presentation uh, at what we are doing at the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute at California State University, Fresno. First and foremost, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, New Year just began a week ago, so Happy New Year, uh, Happy 2024. May it be a wonderful year for all of you who are following us uh, independently of whether you're following us here in the United States of America, whether you're following us in Canada. We have lots and lots of folks in the Portuguese American community um, and, of course, uh, many, many folks in the Portuguese Canadian community as well. And those who follow us in different uh, parts of the world, the different parts of the Portuguese diaspora and not just the Portuguese diaspora, but those who are following us at uh, various venues and uh, through various other countries, uh, including in Portuguese speaking countries where we have many folks, even in our English sessions, that also follow us as well. We thank you all for following us. We thank you all for being part of um, this uh, ongoing conversation and of what we try to do at, Port at the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute at PBBI at California State University Fresno, which is basically to g preserve our history and to create our narratives. As all of you are seeing, I'm uh, showing a bit of a presentation that we will guide us through this morning session here at uh, PVBI, California State University, Fresno. As you know, the California State University, Fresno, or the California State University system, first and foremost, is a system of 23 campuses. And we always like to mention that, of course, because uh, many folks in different parts of the country and different parts of the world uh, don't know about our system. And so the California State University system is uh, uh, a system of 23 campuses. Fresno State is, uh, of course, one of those 23 campuses. Fresno State is over 100 years old, and the California State University system uh, has almost a half a million students, about 498,000 students. At Fresno State, at California State University, Fresno, we have uh, uh, over 25,000 students in our undergrad and our grad program uh, programs as well. So uh, this is uh, actually a shot of the California State University system, the uh, the the uh, Fresno State, as we call it, the campus, um, which is a rather large campus, including a full-fledged farm where we have uh, uh, over a thousand acres and uh, we cultivate many, many of the products uh, and lots of opportunities for our students at hands-on at Fresno State. So first and foremost, welcome. This is our first session. We'll be talking to you about all of the different sessions that we have planned for you between now, today, uh, January the 8th, and uh, our last session will be for the spring semester will be May the 9th. Uh, that is actually when our classes end and then students begin testing. And then we have, uh, of course, uh, all of the graduating ceremonies and lots of different events that continue on at Fresno State for about another 10 days after classes are out. And uh, we will, of course, as we always do, we will have a summer session. Uh, PBBI will always has a summer session with different activities. And that will be between the end of June and the end of July. And then we come back with our fall session around mid-August or so, about a few days before classes begin. The same thing this year. So we're starting our sessions today, uh, January the 8th, but actually classes do not begin until January the 18th. A little bit about our mission and vision, and I'm not going to read it. Uh, those of you who are looking at this through a large screen, of course, can read it. Um, but uh, 
just a few of the things that uh, for those of you that are tuning in for the first time that are uh, hearing about PBBI maybe for the very first time or have heard about it but uh, haven't uh, of course uh, been involved in it or one way or another have not known much about what we try to do at PBBI so just to let you know that uh, our the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute we are housed as I said at California State University Fresno Fresno State we are a product of three colleges we work with all of the colleges and all of the different departments at uh, Fresno State, but we are a product of three colleges, the College of Arts and Humanities, the College of Social Science, and the uh, Jordan College of Agricultural Science and Technology. And so we are indeed a, um, uh, a uh, product of uh, three different sections of uh, three different colleges of the university. And the university is composed by uh, eight different colleges. And of course, we are one of those as well. Uh, and uh, we, of course, at Fresno State, work with all of the other different colleges. For example, we work with the uh, College of International Studies. We work with the Crimean College of Education um, and many, many others. But we are pro part of these three colleges. And for a very simple reason, we actually began as an exchange program or exchange program between the University of the Azores and California State University Fresno, which is still going on through the Jordan College of Agricultural Science and Technology. And then our oral history began, our oral history project, and that began originally uh, as a combination of both the College of Arts and Humanities and the College of Social Science. And then I teach, um, I'm a lecturer at the uh, uh, MCLL, that is the Modern and Classical Language and Literature Department, which is part of the College of Arts and Humanities, where we have a minor, uh, two different minors in Portuguese. And uh, of course, um, we also have our uh, speaker series, our speaker and conference series, which entitles all three colleges. We try to have uh, topics in, of course, the College of Arts and Humanities, in the College of Social Science, and in the Jordan College of Agricultural Science and Technology. And there's a bit of our vision there at the bottom, too. As you can see, it's designed to, and I'll just read this one part for you, it's designed to be the hub of interaction between Fresno State students, faculty, and staff, and the Portuguese diaspora in California, and in particularly, of course, in Central California. The Portuguese Americans, mainly from the Azores Islands, have been making their home in this region since the 19th century. The contributions made by Californians of Portuguese ancestry are an integral part of this multicultural state in important sectors such as agriculture, education, the arts, public service, among many others. So this is our vision and this is our mission at California State University Fresno at the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing uh, during this spring semester, beginning today, January the 8th and ending on January the 15th. But we also will um, not only talk about the calendar of events, but also some of our ongoing projects that you probably don't see, uh, but uh, they are part of what we do on an ongoing basis at Fresno State, including all the work, for example, that is beginning very, very soon uh, to continue our exchange program, that we have four students from the Jordan College of Agricultural Science and Technology that visit the Azores and will be visiting the Azores again. When I mean visit, they're actually working. It's in a month-long internship and they will be this year, we are looking at the end of June uh, to the end of July. So somewhere around um, June the 28th, 29th until about July the 28th or 29th, because our students need to return about uh, two and a half weeks or so before their semester begin. And so we are already are working on that. And that takes a lot of, it takes a village, it really does. And it takes uh, people, for for example, like the Tulare Angra Sister City Foundation, who generously donates to this program every year. Uh, families like Elder Dominguez and Cindy Dominguez and their families, um, other families in the valley that also uh, that also donate. 
we also had an original of uh, uh, fund from from FLAB, which we still have some funds that we work on that. And we also have, uh, in the, for example, the Grupo de Furcados Aposento de Turlock, which gave us a general donation in 2023. Uh, and hopefully we'll have the same. And other organizations, we are actually reaching out to other organizations. This program, just to let you know, even though with the partners that we have, in other words, with the city of Angra and the University of the Azores, but mostly the municipality of Angra and what they do in receiving our students and uh, their uh, contributions, even with that, uh, this program to take four students from Fresno to the Azores for a month-long internship, and then to have four students from the University of the Azores come to Fresno, to Fresno State for a month-long internship, costs us roughly around eighteen to twenty thousand dollars. It depends on uh, some deals. It depends on some things that we can get at a little bit of a better price. It depends on a lot of volunteerism. Uh, so, for example, we have families that invite the students out to dinner when they're here in uh, uh, Fresno. And that, of course, is less uh, costs because these programs are no cost to the students. So um, the students get their airline tickets, both the ones in the Azores and the ones here, and they get their lodging and they get, uh, of course, their food, everything paid for, and including some visits to different things, whether for hours we go to the Azores or vice versa. So the program costs Fresno State uh, through the Jordan College of Agricultural uh, um, uh, Science and Technology um, anywhere between eighteen to $20,000. And so anything that we can get, and that's for eight students. So really, that is not a lot of money if you divide that up by the costs for eight different students for from each side. But so that's how it began. And then from that, of course, we have uh, been from that exchange program, we have come forth a long way in the last uh, five years. We'll be commemorating five years for PVBI and um, many, many different things that we have put forth. One of our things, of course, is our oral history. And this is a screenshot of uh, where the oral history is uh, housed. And that is at the Special Collections Department at the California State University Fresno at our Fresno State Library. And as you can see, uh, and I'll be uh, uh, showing you, indicating you here, and I hope that you can see it as I uh, scroll through it, we have the For Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute here looking at the bottom of the picture of Luís Vaz de Camões, our premier poet. And so it is where we have housed our PBBI book collection. So all of the books that we have uh, that have been donated by the government of the Azores, by FLAD, by other, uh, by Lidwindo Borba editions and other editors by Portuguese, uh, uh, Portuguese Heritage Publications of California, of course, by Bruma. And they're all housed at university through the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute collection. And uh, they're also uh, little by little being put uh, online as well so people can so especially students they can go online that's where they do a lot of the research and they can see what kind of book that they're looking for for a particular project that they need to do and it's not just the projects that they do at the uh, uh, at our classes our portuguese language and literature classes it's also so uh, projects that they may do through sociology uh, through literature classes, through uh, the social science classes, through agriculture, any kind of project that they need to go through that has to do with the Portuguese American experience. And they can go to the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute collection, which again is housed at the library. And then our oral histories are also housed at the library. We have now collected as of this morning, as of the ones that we are actually doing two of them today, um, a total of 93 so, but that was in in 2023, not including in, uh, through 2024. But a total of 93 oral histories have been recorded. These have been recorded through the Media Communication and Journalism Department, MCJ. These have been recorded through the College of Social Science, uh, through folks who uh, have collaborated with us. These have been done through our students uh, as part of a project that uh, some of our Portuguese classes have. And so we have collected a total of 93 of these, about 45 are now totally transcribed. So about half of them are totally transcribed. And I believe we have about 36 or 37 that are online completely. And we'll have another nine or 10 that will be online shortly. And our goal for 2024 is of course, to collect at least another 25 to 30 oral histories. Uh, and I think we'll be able to do that without any problem. 
Uh, that will put us at over 125 if we do uh, a, a few over 30. And uh, and then we will um, also, and our goal is to have the majority of them, at least double what we have now. So about 70 to 75 of these already online by the end of 2024, beginning of 2025. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of folks that get involved in this, transcribing uh, the, the these uh, oral history recordings. They're usually anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. Some of them a few minutes less, some of them a few minutes more, and they all have to be transcribed. They all have to be looked at. The, there's a team that works at the special collection that then fine tunes all this and puts it forward. And then our documentaries, we have up here on the library site, already the, doc, the first documentary and the second one will be up within the next few weeks as well. We have done two different documentaries uh, on the Portuguese American experience in Central California, two documentaries in the last five years based on these oral history recordings that we have done. So that is one of our major components of PBBI at Fresno State. We are now with the 93 collected oral histories, the largest Portuguese oral history program of any university on the West Coast of the United States of America. Our goal is I would like to, uh, and I'll express this to you freely, and uh, you can hold me up to it also. Uh, my personal goal would be that uh, by the end of 2025, beginning of 2026, so within about uh, two years, that we could have close to 150 oral history recordings done. And at least uh, and at least a hundred of those already archived. And so, if we can do that, if we can in the next three or four years uh, have a total of 150 plus recorded and a hundred close to 150 archived, uh, certainly this is a great um, a, a a great amount of information for those future scholars and presently as well. I have our students sometimes consult these oral histories for things that we are doing in, especially in our literature and culture class. And so it is, uh, it, it, it's, it's really a great tool to have to preserve the Portuguese American experience. We have um, we have interviewed folks in their 90s and folks in their 20s because the, to us and to our, to our project, the Portuguese American experience is not just the immigrants, although that's an important component, but also first and second and third generation. The Portuguese American experience is what we have built in California and in Central California, and particularly in the last 150 so years. And of course, this has been done with multi-generational uh, folks. And this has been done with immigrants, with first generation, with second generation. We have even, we have uh, done recordings with third and even fourth generation. We have done many recordings with folks that it was their grandparents or their great grandparents that have immigrated from the Azores. And they all have a connection, of course, to the Portuguese American experience. So that's a big major part that we will continue in the spring of 2024. My personal goal is that between MCJ, the Media Communication Journalism Department, what we're doing there with another project that we are beginning, um, the uh, the the stories that we record that I record all uh, with contacts in the Portuguese American community and those that some of our students will be doing. My personal goal is that this uh, semester, this spring semester of twenty twenty five, that uh, or twenty twenty four. I'm ahead of myself by a year. That we record twenty five. That was where the, the twenty five came from. That we do a total of twenty five oral histories for this spring semester of 2024. I know that's ambitious, but I think that we can do it. We're recording two of them this morning, um, today, uh, January the 8th. We have a few others scheduled between MCJ and the, the ones that we do on video with the with the team from the Media Communication Journalism Department. We should be able to do about uh, 10 to 12 of those during this semester. And uh, if we can accomplish that, 10 to 12 during this semester, then we can accomplish another uh, 12 to 13, 14 with students and with the ones I do on special projects as well. So these are some of our events and some of our projects, ongoing projects at Fresno State. So let's look at um, going from the from my left that I'm as I'm looking at it, it may be different for you, but the Cagajo Colloquium is a community of writers. We try to have one to two sessions per semester, um, focusing on 
writers in North America that have ties to the Azores. Then if you look under that, there's Olhos nos Livros, or Eyes on Books. It is a weekly segment that we're going to restart here in about two weeks. And it is done in uh, with four different folks besides myself, uh, my good friend and colleague, uh, uh, Professor José Luis da Silva, who is a retired educator from San Jose uh, School District in Northern California. Uh, also, Professor Emeritus uh, Manuela Marujo, who is also a retired professor and from the University of Toronto, and the sculptor and poet and also good friend, um, uh, João Martins, who lives in the area of Newark, New Jersey. So between the four of us, we choose a book that is about the Portuguese American experience. This project is done in Portuguese. We have the presentation um, that is it's put out every Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, the, the day of the week that we try to do it. Um, and we try to feature, so we'll feature four different books, one book every week by one of different one of us, either myself, José Luis, Manuela, Marujo, or João Martins. And then the fifth week, we have a live session. And we try to do this three times a semester. So about 12 books every different semester that we have for uh, in Portuguese to put forth um, these these wonderful writings that have been done by Portuguese uh, writers, authors, poets, um, journalists um, that have uh, published in Portuguese in North America. And then, of course, some of them in translation. We've done those as well. And the idea is to keep the fluency of the language as much as possible by giving uh, information about these books, by doing kind of a book review, by talking about them, by reading a little bit about them, and hopefully to entice folks to continue reading in the Portuguese language. If you look there in the middle, ADMA, which is the Azores Diaspora Media Alliance, is a newer project for us. It's about a year old now, and uh, it is indeed uh, a an alliance of all the different uh, uh, Portuguese media outlets that wanted to join it, a very freely allowance. Uh, we try to do, again, alliance, I should say, we try to do again about two events per semester, and we try to keep in contact with each other or all the different media outlets. There are over 60 of them between Canada and the United States and the Azores and Brazil that belong to this association that is housed at Fresno State and that we hope to put forth future projects around ADMA as well. We have two very ambitious projects that we'd like to put forth in the next 12 to 18 months. Then uh, underneath that, Azoria Diaspora Forum is something new for us. We're going to be kicking that off soon. It is um, it is part of what we do at Fresno State. Many of the things that we do are tied to the Azores because our community is very tied to the Azores. In the Central Valley, it's about 90% from the Azores. Um, and so we will be uh, creating, uh, we have created, but we'll be formalizing with uh, folks from different parts of North America and the Azores, this Azorian Diaspora Forum which we hope to be a forum, um, a platform uh, for a dialogue, a continuous dialogue between the Azores and the diaspora, whether it be in immigrants in first, second, third, or fourth generation, or even fifth generation as well. The Medeta Diaspora Initiative is also something that we began last year as in a trial basis, and we're going to um, have it be a little bit more vocal this year of 2024, with different projects that focus on those who are immigrants, especially uh, to uh, any part of California, but obviously we always concentrate on Central California, but also Northern California and Southern California. San Diego has a very, very rich um, diaspora that is from the archipelago of Madeira, uh, such as and Northern California does as well, uh, especially in the Hayward, San Leandro, East Bay area. And also here in the Valley, we have folks from Madeira that we have uh, quite a few families actually for in the Lemoore and Kings County area as well. And so we're going to be concentrating on doing some things through our other platforms that focus on Madeira. And then above that, you see, of course, Bruma Publications, which is a part of the University Press at California State University of Fresno. And we work very closely with Letras Lavadas and Nova Grafica uh, in the Azores. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. So here is our here are our events for the PBBI Flat Fresno State Lecture and Conference Series for this spring of twenty twenty four. So there you see them. There they are. 
Um, is it ambitious? I sent this actually to our board and a couple of our friends, and they thought I was kind of crazy, and maybe I am at 65 years old uh, to be doing this. Um, but um, we all have, uh, uh, as we say in Portuguese, todos nós temos um pouco de loucura. And so in, the, in January, um, we have began different things. We have uh, an event uh, uh, tomorrow at this time at 11 o'clock, as you have seen those who follow us on our different social media platforms. Um, the event tomorrow will actually be um, part of what we're going to be doing with the celebration of the Carnation Revolution. And then we have an event on the 10th, um, uh, coming up elections in the Azores. We're going to give you uh, a little bit of an overview. So many, many folks have been in touch with me asking me, we don't really understand what the autonomous process is and how do we um, how do we know a little bit more about these elections, what they mean? And so this is, of course, not partisan. It's apolitical, no politics involved as far as party politics. But of course, there's politics in life and everything that we do. But explaining what happened uh, in the last election, why the Azores are going to an election a few months earlier than they were supposed to. The election was supposed to be in October and the composition of the various parties running for the February 4th election process. That will be on the 10th. Then we have our Alfred Lewis reading series that we are very, very proud of that project um, that uh, not only myself, um, but uh, poet Rosalinda Batista is also the co-curator and doing an excellent job. And um, our Alfred Lewis reading series, there are four of these readings per year. Uh, eventually, we're going to be, hopefully, by the end of this year, beginning of the 2025, we'll be publishing a book with all of the readings that have been done through the Alfred Lewis reading series. We have that on the 17th. We have an event on the 23rd, we have an event on the 25th, and then we have a in-person event on the 30th. So some of these events will be in person and some of them will be online. We're trying more and more that the events that are in person to film them and then to have them available through our YouTube channel. And so February 2024, we have events scheduled for the 5th, the 8th, the 15th, the 25th, and the 29th. For March of 2024, we will be commemorating a Portuguese Immigrant Week, that is March the 2nd through the 9th, and during that week, we actually have a couple of poets that will be here for a few days, for about a week from the Azores and mainland Portugal, and we will also have um, events every day, whether it be in person, we have two events in person scheduled for that week at Fresno State, and we have uh, events uh, uh, every single day online about the Portuguese American experience in California. We have also decided that that week uh, from now on will be the week that will be commemorating the anniversary of PBBI. So PBBI was founded in uh, February, actually it was founded at, at the beginning of that semester. We started the semester before, but we did a lot of the work in January and February of 2019. And then we kind of had a kicked off event that was the um, in mid uh, February. And we've had an event, whether it be online and then back in person, uh, around the mid February, mid to end of February. But because there's a few things going on in our community and at the university as well, because Portuguese Immigrant Week is only like about 10 days after we normally have this event, we decided that the best way and to also to give a little bit of, of, of a new push to Portuguese Immigrant Week in California would be uh, to have the PBBI event during Portuguese Immigrant Week. So we're going to have one event in person at Fresno State, possibly two. We're working on that right now. And we will have certainly at least two events per day online uh, related to Portuguese Immigrant Week in California. Then we have events on March the 12th, the 14th, the 20th, and the 21st. And then we come back in April because the last week of, uh, as you can see, there's no events the last week of uh, uh, of March. And that is because it is uh, Easter week and traditionally spring break at Fresno State. So our students are not there, our faculty as well. Some are, uh, some aren't, but uh, it, it, there are no classes. And so we will not have be having any events during that week as well. But we come back right after and we have events on April the 3rd, April the 11th, the 12th the 15th, the 18th, the 23rd, and the 25th of these events. Uh, April 11th is a very exciting event that we do every year. Didn't do it during two years during the pandemic, but did it uh, already in 2023. And uh, we didn't do, we actually did it in 2020, the year of the pandemic, and then the pandemic kicked in about a couple of weeks after. 
but then we weren't able to do it in 2021 and 2022 is still an iffy. And so we began, we restarted again last year and it is scheduled for this year, which is our Portuguese student day at Fresno State. So high schools that have a Portuguese language program or high schools that have a Portuguese club are all welcome to attend. Last year, we had the three Portuguese, uh, uh, the three Portuguese uh, language course from the, the various schools in Tulare. So I should say all three Portuguese, uh, all three schools in Tulare High Schools teach Portuguese, as all of you know, Tulare Union, Tulare Western, and Mission Oak. We had about 160 students from these three schools, which is great. And then we have students from uh, Sierra Pacific and Hanford has a very, very vibrant uh, Portuguese club on campus. And so we had, and then our students from Fresno State, so we had about 200 students together. We have in the past have had students from uh, Hillmar. We've had students from Turlock. We we encourage and welcome Hillmar, Turlock, uh, Series, and all of the other um, community schools uh, to attend this event. It, it's going to be April the 11th. It usually starts about um, 9.30ish to 10 in the morning, usually about 10 because of the time that schools start and then they have to transport their students to Fresno State and they're usually about an hour away, 45 minutes to an hour. So well, the event goes usually from 10 until about 2 so that then uh, students can return back. Um, and this year we're very excited because we're going to be commemorating the 25 de Abril, the 50th year of the revolution that brought democracy to Portugal. We're going to have Commander Jorge Betancourt present in person. Uh, he speaks very well English and he'll be talking and doing a program with the students. And so it's going to be a very, very interesting and worthwhile event. And we hope that this year we even uh, go, we have more schools participating and hopefully we'll have about 250 or 260 students. As I said last year, we had around 200. And so the uh, there will be an event around the 25 de Abril on the 12th, also with Commander Jorge Tencourt. And then we will have also an event on the 15th in the Portuguese language classes of Fresno State that day um, with the commander as well. And then we have another event. All these events will be tied around the 25 de Abril on the 18th, the 23rd, and the 25th. Then in May, we have our annual symposium, Filaments of the Atlantic Heritage, now completely online, and that will be May the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And then we have also events May the 5th, which is uh, Worldwide Portuguese Language Day, and May the 9th, which is uh, will be uh, part of our series, which actually start on the 25th of January. It's one of our events which is as Nossas Vozes, that is a Portuguese language series that we put together that I uh, co-moderate with my good friend Elidio Preda from Florida uh, for PBVI uh, uh, with a partnership with PALCAS, the Portuguese American Leadership Council of the United States. We actually have events. We have uh, the series as Nossas Vozes about once every three weeks, and it'll be part of this, of course, BBBI, uh, Fresno State, uh, FLAD um, lecture and conference series. Some of our ongoing events as well are these two new platforms that we began in August. Um, Novidades began in August and Filamentos began in September. And so August, September of last semester of last year, uh, about uh, five months ago, four to five months ago, we began both of these projects. Novidades, the islands and the diaspora. Uh, both of these are from Bruma Publications, from PBBI. These are two platforms. More and more students read, as all of you know, through iPhones. And so, and so do a lot of adults as well, not just students and adult students, but also folks. I have friends of my age who now read is through Kindle uh, or through an online uh, service. And so they read through an iPad. That's how they read. They no longer read on paper or they do, but very little. The majority of their reading is done through uh, these uh, online programs. And so um, why not be there as well? And so Nuvidadish is something uh, uh, the islands and the diaspora exactly as it says so we are a platform we try to have at least one some days we have two three stories from the Azores from Madeira so the islands translated into English because we had been having lots and lots of folks that contribute to Fresno State that are friends of Fresno State that are in our diaspora and that have asked me continuously if we could do a project like this I contemplated it for a couple of years, um, back and forth. Should we do it? Should we not do it? I finally committed to it. It's been a lot of work, I can tell you that. But it has been uh, 
fulfilling to see that there is a need. Um, for example, in the month of uh, December, uh, Nuvidadish, we had over 20,000, 20, actually over 23,000 people that went on the platform and read uh, a story here, a story there. So we're very, very excited about that. It's a way to, it's a community service. It's a way to give back to our community. It's a way to uh, uh, basically um, also um, do a form of, of, um, of, of community service to those who are of second, third, and fourth generation who want to know something about the Azores, who want to know what's going on in the Azores, what's going on in Madeira. So we try to have at least one or two news stories per week from Madeira. We try to have at least one story per day from the Azores. We try to have also some stories from the Portuguese American community as well. So it is indeed a way that we try to reach those who are already of second, third, and fourth generation. And obviously they're not going to read a full newspaper. They don't have the time about what's going on in the Azores. So we try to pick stories that are um, of human interest, stories that are interesting about the internationalization of the Azores, stories that have to do with some of the dilemmas, some of the challenges. For example, resuming the battle against poverty in the Azores, tourism and elections in the Azores, um, uh, combating the school dropout rate in the Azores, which is horrific. It's still uh, almost 30%, when in mainland Portugal it's less than 9%. And so and in Europe, it's also it depends on the country, but it's in some countries as low as five and six percent. And so these are some of the things that we try to bring awareness to the Portuguese American diaspora in the West Coast. Obviously, we're, you know, here at Fresno State, we're in Fresno, California. We are in the Central Valley, a very uh, uh, strong Portuguese American presence. But since these things are online, of course, these are available to anyone, whether you are the West Coast or East Coast, or you're in Hawaii or or Alaska or the South or Florida um, or up north in the Dakotas. In the if you are overseas in other parts of if you are in in um, Australia or other parts of the world where you have some ties to the Azores or you're interested. The, that is what we do with Nuvidades, the islands and the diaspora. The other one is Filamentos, Artes e Letras, Arts and Letters in the Azorian Diaspora. And this one is bilingual. And so we have works in English that are translated um, and works in Portuguese and the original language. And so we try to do um, bilingual and we try to do it again uh, as a um, uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, Filamentos um, is not usually updated daily, although if you look at uh, what I'm showing you now, January the 8th, there's a story. There were two stories in January the 7th. There were uh, one. There was one post on January the 5th about the Carnation Revolution. And then um, January the 4th, we had a couple things as well. So some days there are two or three things, it's three or three items. Um, some days there may not be anything, but we, but certainly every week, there are at least four or five different uh, posts, uh, whether they be creative nonfiction, whether it's a fiction piece, whether it's a poem uh, translated to English or in Portuguese, um, whether it is about an arts exhibit, as you see there, textiles on the journey from fiber to object, whether it is on Natalia Correa and her uh, centennial, because we have indeed... Um, uh, at, uh, through the uh, PBBI at Fresno State created a, a study center uh, around Natalia Correa. We'll be talking a little bit more about that. And so every single week there is an, uh, an event or I should say a piece uh, from Natalia or about Natalia uh, in English usually because the idea is to bring forth Natalia to uh, an American market and, and a Portuguese American market is that. So Portuguese Americans can know about Natalia Correa. They've heard about the name, that, but do not know a lot of her work. But also our students, our faculty, and our staff. Natalia Correa was one of Portugal's leading voices, certainly leading voices in the feminist movement in Portugal in the, in the latter part of the 20th century. And she was indeed not just a great poet, but also a thinker of the Portuguese language. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so here are some of our events that we're going to be concentrating on. And we will be doing 
a bit about this um, uh, tomorrow. So uh, be, be here at 11 o'clock as we talk about all of the different events that we actually put forth as part of the Luso American Education Foundation Conference, which was dedicated to the uh, uh, beginning of the 25 de Abril. And so it was uh, called Carnations in September, as you might recall. It was done in the latter part of September of 2023. From all of the different sessions that we had, we came up with an action plan. We actually presented that action plan at the end of the sessions, at the end of the conference. We have worked a little bit on that action plan since late September, a little bit throughout October, November, and December. And we have an updated version that we're going to uh, that we're going to share with you tomorrow. What we at PBBI at Fresno State will be doing and what we would like, and we will be willing to collaborate with any organization, school, media outlet, et cetera, about uh, what could be really and should be a community event for the entire state of California. All of the different organizations can do it their own way, but really to have um, a true commemoration. It's such an important date because it brought democracy to Portugal. As I mentioned, our Catedra Natalia Correia, as you can see there, focuses on four different aspects. Literatura, it can be translated very easily to literature. Uh, cultura, culture, investigação, research, publicações, publications. So that's what we do on an ongoing basis. It has just started, but uh, we have, we're on... We're doing uh, lots and lots of different things. There are researchers in Portugal that do research on Natalia Correia. We hope to publish some of that research. We hope to translate some of that research. We have been doing online publications, but we are also looking at doing a paper publication as well. Um, we can collaborate with some of the other works that are being put forth to publish throughout this uh, year. And so, um, and we'll be continuing this, not just during Natalia's cent centennial, which uh, basically is going on um, until September of this year, but we will be uh, on an ongoing basis, as long as I'm involved, at least with PVBI, uh, to continue to work on the works of Natalia Correa to bring more awareness and through Natalia to maybe even uh, uh, have a program for young scholars, for young writers. So it, it focuses around these four major pillars, which are literature, culture, uh, research, and publications. And then, of course, our Bruma publications, as you all know, these are some of the um, uh, as, as you see, they're happy reading throughout 2024 that we put forth a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the, this is what we have published, uh, Calligraphy of the Birds, the book there on the bottom left, and the one on top, uh, also on the left side, Contos Populares, or Portuguese Folk Tales of California. Both of those were published in 2023, at the end of 2023. The Folk Tales in September of 2023 and Calligraphy of the Birds in uh, December of 2023. Both of these were published by Bruma Publications. I should say that Calligraphy of the Birds was published by Nona, uh, which is a uh, publishing uh, house in uh, the island of São Miguel in, in the Azores that works with Letras Lavadas, who is our partner in São Miguel and throughout the Azores. And um, but Bruma Publications had uh, uh, also was involved in, in this edition. So it was a co-edition. And then, of course, in 2024, those are the other ones that we have published. So we published the uh, History of the Azores, Questions and Answers, which is our uh, here in Central California is the book that more that a lot of people have been requesting. And we'll talk about how you can do that. And uh, so it's a book that has basically, it's a, an original by Professor Luis Mendonça that he allowed uh, PVBI to translate into published English, History of the Azores, Questions and Answers. And then we have Into the Azorean Sea, which is a um, uh, an anthology of Azorean poets, uh, over 100 poets in, two, in both languages, in Portuguese and in English. Um, and then we have that is used actually both of these books history of the azores and into the azorean sea are used in our uh, azores literature and culture class that we teach every single fall at fresno state it is an english language class about the azores basically the history the literature and the culture of the azores and so the other books that you see there between words 
is a collection of poetry by Vera Duarte from the beautiful island nation of Cabo Verde off the coast of Africa. We want to also publish uh, from other parts of the so-called Luso, uh, Lusophone world, uh, the Lusophonia. And so we started with Cabo Verde, but we hope to publish poets from Mozambique, from Angola, uh, on a once-a-year basis. We can do maybe one once a year. Uh, we're also very limited on funds. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of sponsors. And uh, then we have Inner Snow, which is um, our first publication from a mainland Portugal poet, Alberto Pereira, um, who the book has been published, but will be launched in March here in California. And Rising of the Shadows, which was just published at the end, right at the end of 2023, um, it's a collection of translation of, of poems by José Pedro Leite. It is the book that won him the Natalia Correa Poetry um, Prize in 2021. And so we um, are honored to have published that as part of our Cátedra Natalia Correa as well. It was translated uh, by uh, uh, Luis Emilio Correa and myself. And uh, we this book hope, uh, is out already. Uh, in the Azores. It'll be out here in California soon, in about hopefully in a few weeks. And then uh, we hope to have uh, José Pedro Leite in Louisiana here in uh, hopefully the fall of uh, 2024, if not in the spring of 2025. So that's what we did. But this is going forward. So with Letras Lavadas and Bruma Publications and the press at California State University of Fresno, we will continue to publish our so besides the platforms, and let me just go back to that so you can see, besides these uh, these platforms, and I went the wrong way, so let me uh, go uh, backwards here. Um, besides these uh, platforms that we have um, that I showed you a few minutes ago, uh, which is the uh, uh, platform uh, that uh, this platform right here that shows us all of the uh, different um, the filamentos and the novidades, these are online platforms, as I said, Novidades Daily, Filamentos a few times a week. Besides these platforms that have these names, we also publish um, newsletter Novidades and a literary publication Filamentos. So the newsletter is in English. The Filamentos is bilingual. We usually have about 20 to 24 pages of Filamentos in that we have literary criticism, original works, poems, etc., and it's about 60% in Portuguese, 40% in English. Novidades newsletter is about 99.9% .9 in English. And um, in Novidades, we publish what's going on at Fresno State. Well, it's, it's a PVBI newsletter. And we feature our oral history program that the students do. And we usually will pick three or four stories from the, the students' work, and we publish them there. We're going to actually increase that amount as well. And then Filamentos, of course, as I said, is a literary publication that is open. We always have a call out for works. Uh, we have a lot of fine contributors, but we are always looking for those in the Portuguese American world that like to contribute to, with their poetry, with their essays, with their literary criticism, uh, with their book reviews, with their original works, whether it be a very short story. Uh, we had a wonderful story uh, called Lembrança by writer um, Anthony Barcelos, uh, or memoirs, or also short fiction pieces as well. And then books in translation that we're going to be publishing, which is we're going to be po uh, poetry collections this year. We count on doing three of them. Uh, Pedro da Silveira, a collection of his work, um, and Misty Paths is actually the title of the book, and it will hopefully be out in about two months or so. So we're hoping to have it out sometime around mid-March. And Madalena Ferrin uh, will be published hopefully in the fall of 2024, uh, hopefully uh, September of 2024. And we're tr trying to see if we can publish in the late fall of 2024, if not early spring of 2025, a collection of work by Luis Felipe Sarmento. Then in fiction, we do have a novella that will be our very first uh, one that we're going to be publishing, which is a translation. It's called Jennifer or a French Princess uh, by Joel Neto. It was a novella that was uh, published here about a year ago. And we are in the Azores. 
and Joel was kind enough to give Bruma Publications uh, through Letters Lavadas also as well the rights for us to publish it. And so we'll be publishing it thanks to uh, um, translator Kathy Baker, who has been working with me on it. And um, along with this book, um, along with Jennifer or a French Princess, there will be also a special anniversary, uh, first anniversary printed edition of Filamentos that will be an extensive interview with uh, Vamberto Freitas, literary critic from the Azores, with Joel Neto about this book. It will be also uh, Paulo Matos, a literary criticism that he did on the book. And there will be other writings as well, Anthony Barcelos, um, Emmanuel Melu, and a couple of other things that we have about the book that will be kind of an anniversary edition of Filamentos that we normally do as a digital publication, but we'll be doing one uh, also printed. And this one will be going along. It'll be an excellent tool for schools to want to teach about the Azores through the novella, also to have the students read the interview and have students read some of the other works that are out there as supplementary reading so they can grasp the uh, the depthness of uh, Jennifer or a French princess. And in interdisciplinary studies, we're going to be publishing the works that were presented at La Page Annual Forum in Santa Maria Island in September of last year. Uh, we're working on a book of collection of works of Natalia Correa, and we're working also on folk tales um, uh, from the islands of Terceira and São Jorge. These are in Portuguese with a synopsis in English, like the one we did about California from Professor Manuel Costa Fontes. This will be done with the Câmara Municipal de Angra do Ismo, or that is the City Hall of Angra, as a partner in this publication. And hopefully we will have that out in the next three to four months as well. And so lots of different things, but for sure, for sure, we will be publishing at least six books um, throughout 2024. It is always Bruma Publications, the press at, Uni at California State University of Fresno, and with Letras Lavadas, because lots of our books in English are, more of them actually, are sold in the Azores than they have been sold here. But that is also a way for people to know about the rich Portuguese tradition in California and in the translation to bring to California voices like we have brought of Alam Oliveira, of uh, Angela de Almeida, of Vera Duarte, of also uh, mainland poets José Pedro Leite and Alberto Pereira, as I mentioned, future of Luís Felipe Sarvento, and also Madalena Ferrin from the Azores, um, and many, many other things that we have planned. So that is basically our talk for today. It was a bit longer than I anticipated, and I Thank you for your patience. Thank you for joining us. Fresno State is uh, here for the Portuguese American community. It is a space where we want to uh, preserve our history through the oral history program and other, uh, other projects as well. And also where we want to create our narratives, a place that we want to not only preserve what we have done as a community here in Central California, in the West Coast of the United States for the last 150 or so years, but also creating our narratives for the future. So thank you all for joining us on behalf of the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute, that is PBBI from California State University, Fresno. It was a pleasure to be with all of you. We hope to see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock when we'll talk extensively about our project to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Carnation Revolution, a Revolução do 25 de Abril here in the state of California. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And thanks again for all of your support of PBBI, that's the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute at California State University, Fresno. Muito bom dia para todos. Um abraço. Até sempre.